Hi everyone, welcome to Duality Repair, and welcome to part two of this interesting phase linear 1000 unit. If you haven't seen part one yet, you're gonna to wanna to go back and take a look at that. In that video, I serviced and tested both the main board and this peak unlimiter board here, which makes up the dynamic range recovery system. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the autocorrelator noise reduction system, which consists of these five boards. So we're gonna service these boards, test that circuitry, and then wrap this unit up. Here's the interconnect diagram, and in part one, we looked at the main board, which consists of this power supply section and this op amp and associated circuitry. We also looked at the peak unlimiter board, which is right here. The noise reduction circuitry consists of these five boards here. So we have a log amp board, band pass one, band pass two, a left correlator board, and a right correlator board. I think the easiest way to do this is to just follow the signal path and go through one board at a time. So why don't we start over here on the left with the log amp board. Here is the log amp, and this small section down here is the power supply. The rest of the circuit is basically split up into two different sections. So we have our input signal here, and this is actually both our left and right channel after being summed on the main board. Once it enters the board here, it can go in one of two directions. In this direction, we have a buffer amplifier for the low frequencies. I believe the cutoff is below two kilohertz. So that's this section here. This section deals with all of the frequencies above two kilohertz, all the high frequencies. And this circuit is actually where the log amp gets its name because the function of this board is to output a signal here, which is proportional to the logarithm of the input signal. I know that can sound confusing. If you're curious to learn more, I encourage you to do some research online about log amps. There's plenty of information about them. There are only five electrolytics on the log amp. These two, which are part of the power supply, those will definitely get replaced, and then these three axial-leaded ones. I'm not even gonna check these. I'm just gonna replace them. I have spares. I'll spot check some of the other resistors and diodes on the board, and if they all check out, we'll be fine there. The other thing I need to do is, if you take a look at this connector, relative to the board, you can see how bent it is. And that's the reason why this board looks so bent while installed in the unit. If you haven't seen that, go back to the first video, part one. I can bend this connector back into its original position. You can see it's flush with the board there, but it just snaps back into that bent position. So I think what I need to do is desolder and remove this entire connector, and I'll try and bend those pins back into shape and reinstall. Hopefully that'll work. I'm done recapping the log amp. I think it looks nice. The components that I spot checked look just fine. And I actually decided against bending that connector so that it's flush with the board. Now that the log amp is installed in the unit, maybe you can see why. If I had bent the connector, the solder side of the board would be dangerously close to the metal chassis of this unit. And so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. We're all done with the log amp board. Next, let's move on to band pass one. Here is the tiny band pass one board. This little section down here is the power supply, if you want to call it that. It contains the sole electrolytic on this board, which is right here. That's pretty much all I'll need to do here, replace this, and maybe spot check some resistors. The rest of the circuit here is split up into two different sections. They're both active filters. So this top section is going to filter for signals in the four kilohertz frequency range, and then amplify it, and then send that out to the band pass two board. And this section down here will filter for signals in the seven kilohertz frequency range, amplify it, and send it out again to the bandpass two board. And when we get to the bandpass two board, we'll talk about what these signals are used for. We're all done with bandpass one. Let's move on to bandpass two. Here's the bandpass two board. And essentially what this board is doing is it's monitoring the audio signal at four specific frequency ranges. So we have a low frequency, 200 hertz, a high frequency, 12 kilohertz, and then two moderate frequencies, four kilohertz and seven kilohertz. It's generating DC voltages, one positive and one negative, that are proportional to the amplitude of the audio signal at these four frequencies. So these control voltages will be used to drive the two correlator boards, which is what we're gonna look at next. 
Like the other boards, I'm definitely going to replace this electrolytic. This is the only one that's part of the power supply section. I'll pull and measure all of the axial leaded ones for ESR and capacitance. If they are bad or even marginal, I'm going to replace those as well. And then once again, I'll spot check some diodes and some resistors. The connectors on this board look just fine, so I shouldn't have to do anything with those. Here's the first axial leaded style electrolytic that I pulled. Not even sure of the brand, but it is a one microfarad at 50 volt. And for reference, I have a brand new Illinois capacitor of the exact same rating, one microfarad at 50 volt. So I figured we'd measure capacitance and ESR and just compare. And on this board, we have that one that I pulled plus two, three, four, five, six, six of that brand. So for the original, the capacitance we have is about 1.4 microfarad. Not terrible, but certainly not dead on. Let's take a look at the brand new one. The brand new Illinois capacitor is much closer to spec, much more accurate, about 1.1 microfarad. So that alone is reason enough to replace all of these of the same brand. But let's just check the ESR. For a 1 microfarad at 50 volt capacitor, the ESR should be no more than 10 ohms, and you can see this one's out of spec at 12 ohms. Let's take a look at the brand new one. The brand new one is actually pretty close to the spec, but it's still passing at 9 ohms. So we'll definitely be replacing all of these purple axial leaded electrolytics. All six purple electrolytics have been replaced. I pulled one of the three IEC branded capacitors. I expect these to be bad as this brand was bad on the Pico limiter board. This is a 2.2 microfarad at 50 volt capacitor. You can see we're reading right around three microfarads. Let's see what a brand new one tests at. This one's testing at 2.3 microfarad, much closer. Let's check ESR. A 2.2 microfarad at 50 volt capacitor should have an ESR no higher than 8 ohms. The original is reading at 14 ohms, much too high. Let's check the brand new one. This one looks good at around 6 ohms. So all three of these black IEC branded capacitors will be replaced as well. All three of the IEC branded capacitors have been replaced. There's only one style left. It's from Nichicon. This should be 4.7 microfarad at 50 volts. This one's measuring at about 6.1, 6.2 microfarad. Let's measure a brand new one. The brand new one, once again, measuring much closer to target for capacitance. Let's check ESR. A 4.7 microfarad at 50 volt cap should have an ESR no higher than 6 ohms. This one's measuring at about 5.8, very close. Let's check a brand new one. This one's much better at 3 ohms. So all four of these Nichicons will get replaced as well. I'm all done recapping the bandpass 2 board. I also spot checked some of the resistors and diodes. And just like the other boards, everything is checking out just fine. So this one is done. I've reinstalled it in the unit as well. So let's move on to the final two boards, the two boards that actually give this circuit its name, the correlator boards. All right, we've made it to the final two boards in this unit, the correlator boards, one for the left channel, one for the right. This is where the actual noise reduction takes place. We once again, have a very small power supply section here with just two electrolytics. It's going to be this one and this one. But based on what we've seen on the other boards, I'm just going to shock and replace all of the electrolytics on both boards. So how does this circuit work? How does the actual noise reduction take place? We have our audio signal entering the board here, and it's got to travel through four distinct stages before exiting the board and going to the main board here. Each of these stages contains what's called a notch filter. A notch filter is a combination of a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter, and so that allows the filter to reduce or attenuate a signal at a very specific frequency. If you remember from the bandpass 2 board, we were concerned with four frequencies. 4 kilohertz, 7 kilohertz, 12 kilohertz, and the low frequency 200 hertz. At each stage, the audio signal can take one of two paths. It can either be forced through this notch filter, where the signal will again be reduced or attenuated, or it can actually bypass this filter through these two diodes here. These two diodes are controlled by the DC control voltages from our bandpass 2 board. And so if the bandpass 2 board detects an audio signal at this specific frequency, it will forward bias these two diodes, allowing the audio signal to travel around this filter unencumbered. If it does not detect a signal at that frequency, these will not be forward biased, and the audio signal will be forced through this filter. And that's how the noise is reduced. 
All right, I'm all done servicing and reinstalling both correlator boards. I think those turned out nice. That got me thinking about the peak and limiter board here. I serviced this board back in part one, and I decided not to replace some of the axial-leaded electrolytics, these ones here. These were the Nichicon branded ones, and I did pull a sample of these, and they measured okay for capacitance and ESR, but I was thinking since I've replaced literally every other electrolytic in this unit, and because these are going on 40 plus years old, I think it'd be a really good idea to just change these as well. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm done completely recapping the peak and limiter board. I feel a lot better about that. All of the boards are now reinstalled in the unit. I never found a suitable solution for holding the boards down that I mentioned in part one. I realized that when I was tightening the top cover down on top of the piece of foam that holds the boards in place, it actually holds them in place pretty securely, and so I feel okay about that. I verified that the peak and limiter circuit is still functioning as it should, and so if you wanna see how that works, make sure you go back and take a look at part one. Otherwise, we're ready to move on and start testing the noise reduction circuitry. To test this noise reduction circuitry, I'm gonna cycle through some frequencies given in the service manual and verify the attenuation at each frequency looks reasonable. Now, I'm not gonna measure anything. This is just gonna be a rough check. We're gonna start with two kilohertz at 250 millivolts. According to the service manual, we should see an attenuation of about two to four dB. So we'll engage the circuit. And you can see a drop there, but it's not too significant. That looks right to me. We're now at four kilohertz and still 250 millivolts. Here we should see a pretty significant attenuation of eight to 10 dB, so this should be cut in half and even more. Let's see what happens. That looks good. We're now at seven kilohertz and again, 250 millivolts. We should see the same attenuation that we saw at four kilohertz, about eight to 10 dB. Let's see what we get. That looks good too. We're now at the end of the audible range, 20 kilohertz, still 250 millivolts. We should again see an attenuation of about eight to 10 dB. It's looking great so far. Let's go to the low frequency. This one's harder to show on the scope, but we're now at the low frequency of just 20 hertz. We're now just gonna use this low frequency calibration knob. We're not gonna use this autocorrelator knob anymore. When we engage the circuit here, we should see this drop about 10 dB. That looks good too. Fantastic. And that'll do it for this interesting phase linear 1000 unit. Thanks for watching.